Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dave. Today we are going to be looking at a question from the Soviet Union. In particular, the question you see right here on the screen. The sine of x to the fifth power plus 1 over the sine of x cubed is equal to the cosine of x to the fifth power plus 1 over cosine cubed. This is known as a Coffin question. Coffin questions were used to refer to tricky questions that were asked to prospective students during the Soviet period, designed with the aim of preventing certain students from gaining admission to mathematics departments. These problems were often carefully designed to have elementary solutions so that they could be used in oral exams, and they often employed simple mathematics such as algebra or trigonometry so that departments could avoid scandals. Nowadays, these practices are frowned upon, but we may see some coffin-like questions in the context of competition-style mathematics. So let's jump right into solving this equation. I want to find all the values of theta for which this equation holds. This is the sine of theta to the fifth power plus one over the sine of theta cubed is equal to the cosine of theta to the fifth power plus 1 over the cosine of theta cubed. And we'll do this on the interval 0, 2 pi. So to let me fit everything on the screen a little bit easier, I will let sine of theta equal x and cosine of theta equal y. This leaves me with x to the fifth plus 1 over x cubed is equal to y to the fifth power plus 1 over y cubed. I can bring the fifth powers on one side and the third powers on the other side to get x to the fifth power minus y to the fifth power is equal to 1 over y cubed minus 1 over x cubed. And I can also rewrite this slightly by rearranging the right hand side. So I would get x to the fifth power minus y to the fifth power is equal to x cubed minus y cubed over x cubed, y cubed. The trivial solution will occur if the right-hand side and the left-hand side are both equal to 0. This implies that x is equal to y, or that cosine of theta is equal to sine of theta. This, of course, occurs at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. It might seem like we're done now, but now we have to consider the non-trivial solution. So the non-trivial case involves doing a little bit of algebra. I have x to the fifth minus y to the fifth is equal to x cubed minus y cubed over x cubed y cubed. I can factor both sides, and I would get the quantity x minus y times the quantity x to the fourth plus x cubed y plus x squared y squared plus x y cubed plus y to the fourth. And this is equal to the quantity x minus y times the quantity x squared plus xy plus y squared over x cubed y cubed. Of course, I can cancel out the x minus y on both sides. And I can also cancel out the x squared plus y squared to get 1 because, as we remember, x is equal to sine of theta and y is equal to cosine of theta. This leaves me with 1 plus xy over x cubed y cubed on the right hand side of the equation. Now to make things a little bit more simple, I'm going to say that x times y is equal to u. This gives me x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus u times x squared plus u squared plus y squared is equal to 1 plus u over u cubed. Again, the x squared plus y squared simplify to 1, and this would give me x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus u times the quantity 1 plus u squared is equal to 1 plus u over u cubed. At this point, we've made some considerable progress about simplifying our expression, but what can I do about the x to the fourth plus y to the fourth? After all, I want to try to get everything in terms of u. 
Well, we can observe that the quantity x squared plus y squared squared is equal to x to the fourth plus 2xy plus y to the fourth, which means that x to the fourth plus y to the fourth is nothing more than the quantity x squared plus y squared squared minus 2x squared y squared. Again, x squared plus y squared is simply going to be 1, and x squared y squared is equal to u squared. Therefore, I have 1 minus 2u squared as the value of x to the fourth plus y to the fourth. I can plug this back in, and now I have an expression that's completely in terms of u. 1 minus 2u squared plus u times the quantity 1 plus u squared is equal to 1 plus u over u cubed. So when I do the algebra on this, I get 1 minus 2u squared plus u plus u cubed is equal to 1 plus u over u cubed. And then I can multiply both sides by a u cubed to get u cubed minus 2u to the fifth plus u to the fourth plus u to the sixth is equal to 1 plus u. Finally, I'm going to move the u to the other side of the equation and rearrange so that I'm going to get u to the sixth minus 2u to the fifth plus u to the fourth plus u cubed minus u is equal to 1. At this point, all that remains is to solve this sixth order equation for u and maybe try and go back and recalculate what theta would be. However, there is a better way, so we're not going to do this. We can recall that u was really equal to xy, which was really equal to sine theta cosine theta. Using the double angle formula, we can write this down as sine of 2 theta over 2. However, it turns out that the maximum value that this can attain is only 1 half. The maximum value of any angle is going to be 1, and 1 times 1 half is simply 1 half. Therefore, the maximum value of u to the 6th minus 2u to the 5th plus u to the 4th plus u to the 3rd minus u is equal to 1 half to the 6th times 2 times 1 half to the 5th plus 1 half to the 4th plus 1 half to the 3rd plus 1 half. And when all of this is added up, it turns out to be 49 over 64. As we can see, after substituting with the proper geometric terms, it is clear that for this um, substitution, u, u to the 6th minus 2u to the 5th plus u to the 4th plus u to the 3rd minus u, the value of this will always be less than 1. Therefore, there are actually no possible solutions to the non-trivial case. Therefore, our final answer is simply that theta is equal to pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And as you can see, our final answer is actually rather unremarkable. This kind of answer would be expected to be found in any high school math book. However, the tricky part of this question is demonstrating that these are the only real solutions on the interval. And of course, doing so in the context of an oral exam with an established time limit. So this is the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please click like and subscribe to my video as there will be more coming up in the future. Thank you very much.